and welcome to the opening plenary lecture of the first interinstitutional week of chemical and material science. As you might know, this event is organized by the faculties of chemistry from Autonomous University of Chihuahua, Autonomous University of Querétaro, and Meritorious Autonomous University of Puebla, and of course, by CIMAB as well. My name is Margarita Sanchez. I'm a researcher from CIMAB. It is a great honor for CIMAB and for our general director, Dr. Leticia Torres Martinez, that a very well-known scientist accepted our invitation. Professor Takashi Goto, thank you very much for being with us today. Professor Goto is internationally recognized as a leading expert on chemical vapor deposition. He developed a manufacturing technology for a silicon carbide-based coating with outstanding heat and oxidation resistance intended for reactor core applications in nuclear power plants in collaboration with Toshiba Corporation and Evident Corporation in order to increase safety of nuclear reactors. This is an accident tolerant coating. He currently belongs to the new industry creation hatchery center from Tohoku University in Japan and to the state key laboratory of advanced technology for material synthesis and processing of the Wuhan University of Technology in China. He received his bachelor's, master's and doctoral degree in material science from Tohoku University. He has published more than 800 papers on sintering, chemical vapor deposition and metal growth of ceramics. His research interest is man material manufacturing but by CBD, spark plasma sintering and melt growth. He is a fellow of the American Ceramic Society and the Ceramic Society of Japan, and an academic of the World Academy of Ceramics and the Asia Pacific Academy of Materials. He is the president of the International Ceramic Federation. He is on the editorial committee of the Journal of Asian Ceramics Societies and an associate editor of Material Letters. Professor Goto. Thank you very much again, and the audience is yours. Thank you very much. Where, where? Is it at the bottom of the screen, in the middle, the, yeah. sharing, the sharing screen? I can't find my file. Out. It's like a square icon. Yeah, it's beginning now. Is it okay? Yes, we, we oh. see. Yeah, it's good. It's good, Professor. Is it okay? Yes, yes, it's perfect now. Professor. Thank you very much. Good Thank morning. You. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I'm very pleased to attend the first inter institutional week of chemical science and materials. My name is Takashi Goto from Japan. I'm now talking on material synthesis by laser chemical vapor deposition. Now, chemical vapor deposition, in short, CVD, is a common material synthesis technique. Gas becomes solid by chemical reactions. Gas is usually pure, and we do not use crucible or some container. There's no contamination. We can make a very pure and very dense material and we can make very high performance materials. So this is uh, just cross section of semiconductor IC chip. In these days, many components like silicon, silicon oxide, silicon nitride, tungsten are all prepared by CBD. Tungsten carbide cutting tools, for example, are coated by silicon carbonitride, titanium nitride, aluminum oxide by using CVD. So alumina silicon nitride, often called uh, ceramics, are prepared by usually sintering and the sintered material usually contain grain boundary, second phase, pores and boys, the property of ceramics may be not intrinsic nature, 
that he may be the nature of impurity and defects. So in order to know the intrinsic nature, or in order to realize good nature of materials, we have to make very pure, very dense materials. So CBD is a very good way to make good materials. So once we have prepared good material, we can know the intrinsic nature of materials, and we can make a high performance material, or we can find a new application of materials. So one of the examples of CBD material is TI3SIC2. I have prepared a very pure, dense, bulky TI3SIC2, thick and a millimeter thickness TIC2 by CBD about 30 years ago, and reported unusual property, which is very soft and very ductile. So this is uh, NIST description. Goto and Hirai reported TS3 SAC2, da, 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 da. At that time, the phase diagram didn't say TS3 SAC2. It was thought TI2 SIC, but I have reported TI3 SIC2 for the first time. Since then, many people know there's TI3 SIC2. So after that, people made TI3 SIC2 by common sintering, actually sintered TI3 SIC2 often contain TIC as impurity, which causes return. So now pure TI3 SIC2 can be prepared by sintering. TI3 SIC2 is one of wide family compounds. TI can substitute by vanadium, chromium, niobium, etc. Silicon can be substituted by germanium, tin, and carbon can be substituted by nitrogen. Nowadays, it is known as max phase, and there are so many applications of TI3SIC2. So CVD is usually used to make thin films. CVD can make also very thick, very dense materials, Bulk CVD silicon carbide is used for many engineering applications. There, and also bulk CVD nitride crucible is essential to grow single crystalline. So advantage of CVD is we can make very pure, very dense and very oriented almost single crystalline. So in this way, the disadvantage of CVD is that the portion rate is low and usually used to make thin films, not usually bulk materials. But if we have good precursor like silicon tetrachloride or a boron halide, we can make bulky materials that still need a long time. But by using only not so reactive precursors. Bulky oxide, for example, have never been prepared by CVD. But it's a why CVD cannot make bulky material or why CVD cannot make materials at high deposition rate is caused of mechanism of CVD. So this is a schematic of CVD. Gases are coming to above substrate and the gases diffuse to the substrate and the chemical reaction goes on the substrate. And the deposition goes, sorry, the film forms on the substrate. So this is called heterogeneous chemical reactions. On the other hand, in the gas phase, gases react and forms embryo, radicals, intermediate, and nanoparticles. These are called 
homogeneous reactions. So almost all gases react in a gas phase and go through in a gas phase. Almost all sources do not contribute to film formation. So usually the portion efficiency of CBD is less than a few percent. So in common CBD, we use this kind of tube furnace, which is called hot wall CBD. The walls are heated and the substrate is indirectly heated by radiation from the wall and heat conduction of gases. So in the hot wall CVD, homogeneous reactions become significant, forming large amount of intermediate radicals and nanoparticles. To study the nanoparticle is also interesting. In CBD, we can make very small and very catalytic nanoparticles. This is uh, cobalt oxide nanoparticle, about 10 nanometer in diameter on alpha alumina powder, which is prepared by CBD. But this is another story. I would like to about the thin film or a thick film or a bulk material. A part of these nanoparticles may deposit on the substrate, then film becomes porous agglomerated powder. This microstructure is likely to contain impurities and it is not good ma microstructure of CBD materials. Even nanoparticle forms, formation is not so significant. Some particles still deposit on the surface. And these nanoparticles become the nucleation site of film formation. This is very common microstructure of CVD. We can call this is cone structure, like a cone of ice cream, like this one. Uh, nodule structure or pebble structure, many people say many names. The nanoparticles become the nucleation site one after another. This microstructure is also contain impurities. This is a microstructure of CVD carbon, which is very, very important material in industry. So this is also so many cones here. Suit of carbon in a gas phase becomes a nucleation site of the deposition. And sometimes the particles formation causes a dendritic microstructure, like this one, or it is called feather-like structure like feather of birds. Since this film is a porous, this is sometimes useful for, for example, summer body coating, but usually it is not good morphology. So nanoparticles may deposit on the dendrite, and this is called cauliflower microstructure. This is a common microstructure of CVD. It may contain impurities and it is porous. Sometimes it is useful for catalysis, usually, but it is not so good microstructure. We have to eliminate the nanoparticles in a gas phase to prepare good materials. So CBD material should be like this one. We have to make very dense, very pure, well-oriented, faceted, and well-oriented material, almost single crystalline in this direction. One of the very important points to prepare good material in CBD is therefore how to control, how to eliminate nanoparticles in a gas phase. Actually, this studied uh, since alpha alumina, for example, very important material for cutting tools, nanoparticle formation in a gas phase was studied. This is actually my former student. And in industry, alpha alumina is prepared by aluminum chloride and CO2 and source, source gas and hydrogen gas. Usually in the CBD of alumina, nanoparticle formation is very significant and we can count, correct the nanoparticles by using particle counter. By using particle counter, we can estimate how much amount nanoparticle forms. 
And if we add hydrogen sulfide to the source gas, so nanoparticles can be disappeared. So H2S is called a radical scavenger. So this is the how nanoparticles forms. If you do not use the H2S to the source gas, alumina film is just agglomerated powder particles. If you add hydrogen sulfide to the source gas, alpha alumina film becomes very fine faceted well crystallized film. So this is a number. How much particles formed in the gas phase? If you add hydrogen sulfide here, no nanoparticle forms. If you do not add hydrogen sulfide here, so many nanoparticles are counted. So the addition of hydrogen sulfide is now commercialized in cutting tool companies nowadays. Hydrogen sulfide is called a radical scavenger in alpha alumina CBD coating. So H2S is sought to eliminate water particle in a gas phase, which become the nucleoside in a gas phase. In a case of silica for IC circuit, very flat SiO2 film should be coated on silicon by CVD. However, it is very likely to deposit nanoparticles on the silicon surface. It is very bad to prepare IC circuit. So C2H2 acetylene was discovered as radical scavenger to eliminate nanoparticles in a gas phase by adding acetylene to very smooth, no nanoparticles deposit on the silica. But in um, many CVD, very difficult to find the radical scavenger. Only, for example, alumina or silica is a very important material. Then people found, but usually too hard to find a good ad additive scavenger gas to eliminate nanoparticles. But if you use for cold wall type CVD, this is the substrate is heated by hot plate or direct current or radio frequency not heated from the furnace wall, nanoparticle formation is usually less. And then we can find condition to prepare very good, well faceted material, aluminum nitride here. So aluminum nitride can be prepared by aluminum chloride and ammonia gas. Aluminum chloride is rather stable compared with many metal organic precursor. Nanoparticle formation is not so significant, but still nanoparticles formed even using this cold wall type CVD. So you can see many cauliflower-like aluminum nitride forms at some conditions and also comb structure aluminum nitride forms rather at low temperature conditions. And sometimes we have to control the distance between nozzle and substrate. So we need many experiments how to make some very good aluminum nitride, very faceted films. These are agglomerated particles, cauliflower like structure contains impurity aluminum chloride or cone structure. Aluminum nitride contains aluminum chlorine. So we have to make this kind of very faceted, very good material. And by using cold wall CVD and by using not so reactive precursor like silicon chloride, well, we can make silicon nitride or silicon carbide, bulky material at high deposition rate, 1.2 millimeter power or two millimeter power. 
some company people came to my lab and studied CBD and commercialized bulk CBD material. But if you use cold of CBD and heat the substrate by laser radiation from the substrate is very small, only substrate is heated and then radicals intermediate and nanoparticles formation, nucleation in a gas phase are very small. Then we can make very dense, very pure, very dense materials. So these rays, laser become quite big and laser area to heat substrate become big about 10 to 20 millimeter in diameter is very easy, but by using optical lens, laser can be more expanded. So much wider or more complicated shaped substrate such as gas turbine blade can be coated and laser can be scanned and zirconia, it trims stabilized zirconia film was coated by laser CVD. So laser CBD can make very thick, very complicated, even using very reactive precursor like metal organic precursors. Actually, laser CBD was proposed more than almost 30 years ago. Laser CBD made wires of silicon nitride or silicon and silicon carbide filament can be prepared by laser CBD. Laser CBD has been used in the past, very thin dot, filament, nano dot, very small materials only by focusing laser. In the past, everybody used laser focusing and to make small materials. Laser CBD is also used to make very thin films. This is called photochem uh, photo photolytic laser CVD. So laser is used for photochemical reactions. So this is used to prepare films, almost no heating of substrate. Laser itself can decompose precursor gas and the repulsion goes. Of course, it is very low crystallinity and impurity carbon contained because metal organic compound precursor contain large amount of carbon. So laser CVD has never ever prepared very big bulky material in the past. But it was not true in laser CVD, less formation of nanoparticles and less gas form phase nucleation. So if we use stable, not so reactive precursor like halide, deposition efficiency becomes very high, several tens percent. And also the deposition rate becomes several millimeter per hour, even using organic or organic compound, if not so reactive. In conventional CVD, efficiency is several percent or less than several percent, also doesn't useful to deposit material and several micrometer power of deposition rate. To heat the substrate to 1,500 also very easy and necessary to use on the laser by heat at first, preheat and then applied laser. So this is an example of silicon carbide by laser CBD by using common precursor, silicon tetrachloride and methane, the deposition rate increased with increasing temperature and also with increasing total pressure. So it becomes around 4,000 micrometer per hour. So we can make a bulky silicon carbide at very high speed by using laser CVD. So this is uh, just cross-section of CVD silicon carbide prepared on silicon 111 frame. Silicon is not so high melting point, about 1,400 
So we can make very faceted, very oriented silicon carbide, even on silicon. So all grains oriented to 111 direction on silicon 111 plane. So we can obtain thick, almost abstraction silicon carbide film in very thick. And uh, this uh, um, epitaxially grown silicon carbide film from silicon, 111 silicon carbide from 111 silicon, and 110 silicon carbide from 110 silicon, and 100 silicon carbide from 100 silicon. So since silicon carbide is very pure and well aligned, no impurity and dense, it becomes transparent. So cubic beta type silicon carbide in intrinsically yellow is transparent. So we can prepare transparent silicon carbide by using laser CBD. And CBD alumina is also, I have talked already, very important material for industry. 006 oriented coating film has the best performance, longest lifetime, and 104 oriented silicon alumina is most ductile compared with other orientations. Therefore, it is very crucial for cutting tool company to coat oriented alumina by CBD. In the industry, alpha alumina is prepared by aluminum chloride and hydrogen and CO2. Hydrogen is very explosive, hydrogen chloride is corrosive. If we can make alpha alumina by using non-explosive, non-corrosive metal organic precursor, it is very useful. But metal organic precursor, safe precursor is very reactive forming embryo, non-part and uh, nanoparticles in a gas phase. So nanoparticles and also the gamma alumina. So preparation of alpha alumina by MOCBD is really difficult. MOCBD alumina is usually gamma alumina and gamma alumina is not so hard. So, and also the portion temperature for alpha alumina always more than 1000. So it is high, it's likely to degrade tungsten carbide cutting tools. So it should be decreased. So this is how alumina forms in the case of laser CBD as a function of temperature and total pressure. Alpha alumina is high temperature form and gamma alumina is a low temperature form. But by CBD, low temperature gamma alumina forms at high temperature and low temp and uh, high temperature alpha alumina, high temperature form, forms low temperature. So this is caused a nanoparticle or embryo of alpha alumina in the, fa in the gas phase at first forms in a gas phase, which becomes a nucleation site of alumina. So gas phase nucleation is really difficult, important. And also this situation is a similar, same in the case of titanium oxide, low temperature form of antitrans forms at high temperature, low temperature form rutile, no, no, high temperature form rutile forms at low temperature. This is also caused by the nucleation in a gas phase. But by using less CV, laser CBD, uh, less nanoparticle formation condition. So this is low temperature pressure. So we can prepare dense alpha alumina at slightly low total pressure, but we can make at low temperature around 900 K, which is almost two to 300 lower than conventional CVD. And by choosing more CVD conditions, we can find condition to prepare specifically oriented alumina films. Then we can find the 006 oriented or 104 oriented 
and 012 oriented Armina. So generally in hexagonal structure like Alpha Armina at a low temperature 001006, basal frame is likely to become the parallel to substrate and higher temperature hexagons slightly slanted, but without using single crystalline substrate, even on polycrystalline or tungsten cut carbide cutting tools, we can prepare a very oriented film at least one direction, growth direction. A cubic structure, for example, beta silicon carbide at low temperature 001 plane is parallel to substrate and with increasing temperature slanted to 110 or 111 orientations. So by using laser CVD, the depression rate of alpha alumina becomes very high, 10 to 100 higher than common CVD. Also in these alumina, it is almost everything is gamma alumina. So alpha alumina only can be prepared by aluminum chloride and hydrogen. But by using laser CVD, we can make alpha alumina by using metal organic precursor. Barium compound is also very difficult to prepare by MOCVD because precursor of barium deep from methanate and titanium isopropoxide DPM is very reactive, very easily nanoparticle forms in a gas phase. By using common hot wall CVD morphology of barium titanate is cauliflower like and agglomerated nanoparticles. The performance is not so good, low permittivity, and we can't see transition from tetragonal ferroelectric to paraelectric cubic structure, no peak around Curie temperature. But by using laser CVD, the morphology of barium titanate is very, very faceted, well crystallized, and permittivity becomes very high. And we can see clear transition from ferroelectric to paraelectric. Sputter film, laser ablation film, uh, basically, this kind of nanoparticle agglomerated. So far, people can't make good barium titanate film. And uh, laser abrasion sputter is very small grain size, much smaller due to so-called size effect. Nanoparticle do not show good ferroelectric properties. And alkaline, in particular sodium compound is also very difficult because sodium is very reactive, forming nanoparticles in the gas phase. Sodium tantalate, strontium zirconate, strontium titanate, perovskites are very good candidate for photocatalytic material. Then we need very good material uh, to study. And uh, photocatalytic active site could be steps or kinks. This is sodium tantalate powder. So we have to make very faceted sodium tantalate film or coating. So by choosing many conditions, we can find conditions to prepare sodium tantalate by changing temperature, gas sources, total pressure, etc. Actually, this is done by Mexican student Ari. Uh, thanks very much to Ari. And uh, we can make the very faceted, well oriented sodium tantrate films in many kinds of directions. And we can make some very good faceted oriented film and it shows very good performance. Sodium tantrate by laser CBD, very well faceted, shows about 
three times higher hydrogen evolution. Strontium zirconate shows 20 times. Strontium titanate shows about four times higher performance. Superconductor film is much more critical. Superconductor tear tape is now commercialized, like this one. So superconductor YBCO is prepared on metal tapes, mulch coated hasteroid tape. So superconduction takes place along C plane. So we have to prepare C axis oriented YBCO epitaxial film on IBAT tape. Metal tape is of course polycrystalline and therefore we need many multi-layer. That's the reason this becomes a multi-layer of gadolinium diliconate, manganese oxide, xanthan, manganese, and ceria. So these films, these coating is usually coated by ion beam assisted deposition in short IBAT. So this tape is called IBAT tape. So making film on metal is also a very big challenge. Usually very difficult. Many companies are not trying to use laser abrasion. Laser abrasion does not need to heat surface so high temperature. It is commonly understand, understood that the disadvantage of CBD is to heat substrate at high temperature. But in laser CBD, only locally heated substrate, not full substrate. So we can coat material even on metal substrate. So in order to make very good YVCO epitaxial film, we have to make good epitaxial seria films underneath YVCO. Seria is cubic and almost all grains are rectangular, almost perfectly aligned in right angle, as you can see here. So in the XRD, it is the same as single crystalline. We call this is a mosaic structure. It's a polycrystalline, but looks almost like a single crystalline. This is more detailed structure of Seria. Seria 100 prime is parallel to the substrate. The side plane is 111 prime. This structure cannot distinguish from single crystal. It is basically single crystalline. But they actually almost increasing, but each grains is slightly slanted or distorted. So we have to evaluate how slanted and how distorted by XRD. So how distorted in plane, C plane by omega scan and how distorted in the growth direction by phi scan. And we measure the hood of this half maximum and smaller, the better. So we have to find the good conditions, very oriented films. So we measure omega and phi scan of hood of half maximum. The smaller the better. We have to find lowest point to prepare films. So we can see the best deposition condition around to 750. The deposition rate of Seria is also very high, around 1000 times or 100 times higher because less nano formation in a gas phase. Then we can deposit YVCO film on seria coated IBAT tape. By changing, changing, changing many conditions, we can find the condition to prepare YVCO film because YVCO has many uh, compounds, not only one, two, three phase, and also 
uh, Eritrea, Kappa Oksa, Eritrea, etc. Big effort, but we have to make. And we can make the A axis oriented YVCO or C YVCO films. Also, mosaic structure, but oriented to A axis and C axis oriented YVCO film, depending on deposition conditions. But superconduction critical temperature of A axis oriented YBCO is low, but C axis oriented YBCO is high enough, about 19K. So we have to make C axis oriented YBCO film. So Seria and YBCO film as um, same as single crystalline YBCO 001 frame is parallel to the Seria 100 frame. Looks like all single crystalline by Paul figure, but still distorted. So we have to make not so distorted YBCO film as small as possible. So again, we have to use one by one omega and phi scan to evaluate how YVCO grains are slanted and distorted. And distortion is not only related with temperature, pressure, composition, but also thickness, for example. We have to optimize adiposition condition and also thickness of YVCO film. So we measure the superconducting critical current. Critical current is also very important for other applications. So this is the effect of gas concentration ratio on the critical current. By changing many conditions, we can find highest current critical current 2.5 mega ampere per square centimeter. Actually, this is slightly deviated from the stoichiometric composition of YBCO, barium less and kappa excess. It is sort of small second phase, like this one, becomes a pinning site of mag magnetic flux or high critical current. So the push. So the deposition rate is almost one to 100 times higher than conventional MOCBD. And uh, this is a uh, film, how it looks like. So Seria and YBCO films were well aligned, looks almost single crystalline, single crystalline like spots can be seen, but actually this is a mosaic structure. Uh, but we can make the almost single crystalline epitaxial film. So for many people actually prepared YVCO film on single crystalline strontium titanate, STO, and a metal tapes and reported critical current density, JC. So far, our results is highest 2.5 mega ampere per square centimeter. So far, the best in the world. So this is the end of my talk. So as a summary, laser CBD can fabricate very pure highly dense material with, with very well-oriented microstructure, well-oriented, well-aligned, faceted material, nice looking material shows very good performance. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Professor Goto, for this fascinating talk. Uh, showing us very, very, very nice materials with a lot of applications. 
Uh, we are uh, ready for some questions. Alejandra? Yes, uh, thanks, Professor Goto, uh, for your presentation. Uh, we have some questions. Um, the first question is, uh, what is the difference between uh, metal organic chemical vapor deposition, rapid thermal chemical vapor deposition, and laser chemical vapor deposition? Yeah, metal organic uh, CBD, MOCBD, is just you use metal organic precursor. So, and as I said, usual CBD, metal organic MOCBD is um, football or uh, cold war, anything, is uh, not uh, always formed, is uh, not so efficient, nanoparticle forms or something, as I explained. So not easy to make very faceted, very oriented, very crystalline material. If it's a very thin nanometer order, that is okay. Uh, not so nanoparticle formed in the space, but if you want to make some several micrometer or a little bit thick material, so MOCBD is very difficult to make very faceted films. It will likely to become some nanoparticle agglomerated or not so or good oriented films. But laser CBD can make uh, even using MOCVD, M, uh, sorry, we use MO precursor, we can make some very faceted, very good material. So uh, just difference is uh, how uh, heat or just uh, make material. Source is same as MOCBD, but by using laser, so we can make some very good material. That is a laser CBD. Is it okay. To... okay, thank you. Uh, the second question, uh, what are the key parameters for a good growth in a CBD? What, what? What are the key parameters mm. for a good growth in a CBD? Yeah, so perhaps any kind of material can be grown very nicely by using CBD. Always very difficult to make uh, material because uh, some agglomeration or many nanoparticles formed in a gas phase. So that's the reason if you can supply very clean gas to the substrate without any nanoparticle formation or many nucleation in a gas phase, you can make some very good material. But it, actually this is very difficult. That's the reason I say laser is useful because uh, no uh, formation of a nanoparticle, nano embryo, etc. that causes the met uh, film become the mess. So if you supply very cream, very uh, nice gas to the substrate, that is okay. And uh, almost all material has self-orientation directions. So material grow very nicely in uh, some specific orientations. But this is usually very difficult for the usual CVD. Uh, fresh gas cannot be supplied to the substrate. That is a point to make CVD. Okay, and we have the last questions and it is about a growth mechanism. Uh, does exist a rule about the substrate characteristic and material that I want to grow? Uh, in a CVD, usually it doesn't matter. Uh, Self-orientation, crystal growth, it doesn't affect it by the uh, substrate. So material has own uh, habit to grow in uh, some specific directions. At some condition, material, for example, silicon carbide, want to grow in one, one, one direction at high temperature or it depends on the gas concentration or pressure or something. It's, uh, it depends on the, what kind of atmosphere and temperature. But so 
But if you use some, some single crystal substrate, epistaxially grown as a substrate affect to the some direction to grow. But in a CVD, without any single crystalline, even polycrystalline uh, CVD material grow some usually some uh, specific directions. So many people report and the CVD research is usually how uh, direct in this way or that way, depending on conditions. And many people make very oriented films by using CVD. So uh, it doesn't matter CV, uh, substrate, but if we use some specific substrate, substrate also affect to the some directions. That is, is a epitaxial growth. But CBD material can have the own direction, self-orientation. Okay, yeah, this, this is important. Uh, for example, for graphing growth, it's necessary a, a, a high uh, crystalline substrate, right? So, uh, could you say again? Okay, uh, the, the monocrystalline uh, substrate is very necessary, for example, for uh, bidimensional materials now uh, in uh, new uh, uh, research, for example, in bidimensional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like graphene. <laughs> yes. So, yes, if you use single crystalline, you can grow more uh, easily to some specific uh, uh, direction. So if texture grows, but yeah. without using single crystal, still we can make some one directionally oriented films, but not two dimension usually, only one direction. Growth direction is some specific directions. Uh, but if we use a single crystal, so two dimensionally or three dimensionally oriented film, you can make. Okay. Okay, Professor Goto, thank you so much for your answers. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Goto. I would like now to uh, share the screen to show your, your uh, we would like to give you a, a diploma for this. I will email you later. So I will try to, uh, if maybe you can stop sharing your presentation. And yes. now I can I can share. Uh... Is it okay? I hope so. Or maybe somebody from the organization can help us because at the moment I cannot share. I don't know if it stops sharing uh, the the screen. Well, yeah, you, you need to um, stop sharing, Dr. Goto, please. Professor, could you stop sharing? I think it's uh, you stop sharing the application, but not the screen. How to do it? Can somebody help us from the you, you cannot you cannot do it in in the, the organization watch? No, I think that he has to uh, stop sharing the screen. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah ah. there you go. Thank you. Okay. But the the the, the, the uh, anfitrión inhabilitó la función de compartir pantallas. Maybe you can give me again the the right to. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, oh. now I'm going to I'm going to read the the. The organizers of the first interinstitutional week of uh, chemicals and material science would like to give the, the next the following diploma to Professor Takashi Goto for the plenary lecture material synthesis by laser chemical vapor depositions during the first interinstitutional week of chemical science and materials. And this is signed by the directors of the of all the, the um, organizing uh, institutions. Dr. Silvia Lorena Maya from, from uh, University, Autonomous University of Querétaro, of Faculty of Chemistry. Dr. Jorge Raúl Serna from the Faculty of Chemistry of WAP. 
Doctora Leticia Miriam Torres Guerra, uh, the, the General Director of CIMAT, and Pedro, Dr. Pedro Javier Martinez from the Faculty of Chemistry of WASH. Thank you very much again, Professor. Thank you very much. Professor Goto, and I, we would like to, um, yes, I will stop sharing now. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much. And the Dr. Leticia Torres would like to say some words. Professor Takashi Goto, yeah. very, very pleased uh, to hear you again and with your interesting um, talk. I hope uh, we can invite you sometime. You are very welcome as well as always since a very long time ago, 30 yeah. years or more. Or more. So uh, hopefully we can uh, invite you and to, you can travel to Mexico, Chihuahua, Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, you are very welcome. Thank you very much for your talk. Thank you very much. See you. See you soon. See you, Professor. Thank you very much again. And thank you to all the audience. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Bye. Bye.